Uh, so I grew up in Chicago, and my dad is an artist, so he and I were making work when I was a kid. And then I took it a lot more seriously in high school. I had a really awesome teacher. And then um, I went to school for agricultural engineering and math, and then I changed into art once I realized that all of the professors were kind of like beyond their years. So. <laughs> I guess after changing and then coming here, I realized that I wanted to apply for an MFA. I had a really strong technical background. There was a huge um, process-based program at Purdue University where I went for undergrad. And then I kind of felt like the theoretical part was left out. So I came here to become more well-rounded, which was great because as I continued to learn, I had the skills to make the work that I wanted to make. And so right now in the Kemper Art Museum, I have a series called Shady Ladies. It's a Midwest gender protest. I work with gender fluid models like myself who are interested in the performance of non-binary gender. And it's still considered a deviant act based on the persecution of people who act outside the male-female gender binary. So I've used that outlaw perspective and borrowed from Hollywood culture and I'm using symbols of the criminal like the balaclava or the hockey mask or the bandana. Oh sure, so actually I got the CTC, the Collaborative Technology Center production grant this year um, and I was able to buy lighting and more studio work, or more, st uh, more technical stuff for my studio work that I didn't have access to otherwise. But um, I would say that technology is kind of just like a helper and that the work is really performative and interpersonal. Sometimes I think that technology can be cold, but it's really just a facilitator for people to express themselves in a clear, concise way. What would be your influence? One of my favorite historical points of reference is Nancy Grossman. Um, she worked on these head sculptures with leather masks, and a lot of times her work was misconstrued as related to the s and movement, and so it became hypersexualized, which was great for her career. However, the work she called self-portraits, and since they were so masculine, a lot of people refused to believe that she was really making images of herself. And I think that really lends to what I'm trying to still talk about past 1970, of existing beyond a binary and really living in the gender spectrum. So Nancy Grossman identifies more with a masculine identity, but because of her appearance, people didn't believe her. I don't think I've ever been motivated by conventional lifestyle or money. Uh, my family is really poor, so we never had money. So it's like finding a job that yields a conventional success to me isn't really appealing. I think that art has the ability to create a kinship between people and start a dialogue that isn't necessarily solving a problem because that, that's not my job. But um, beauty and seduction are often ways to get people to talk about things that are uncomfortable to them or even laughter. Uh, I have a really rich history in comedy and performance, so um, I've, I've researched into Ian Brody's theory of folklore and comedy. Um, and I think that dealing with identity politics, beauty, and image making is really valid in 2016 because it's so much part of not only a digital identity, but an everyday identity. Well, I would say that the work is politically motivated. Um, I consider just aesthetic play kind of masturbatory. So, it is important that when I make work, other people are involved and other people's voices are considered. So when I collaborate with my models, it isn't just an exercise of my aesthetic prejudice. It's a coming together to make something beautiful that will hopefully um, confuse or make the issue more complex.